Hey guys, George from Soundtracks here, and today we're going to have fun with turbines. We're going to go into the detail of how each of these turbines operate and how your Tsunami 2 decoder will match the proper operation of the turbine that you've chosen. So the first thing you want to do when you're picking out your decoder for your turbine is you're going to want to find the turbine sounds. Now these are located on the Baldwin and others, and they're in the version 1.2. This was one of the additions we had in the V1.2. Now when you're looking for the V1.2 packaging, you're either going to see the big sticker located here on the package up front. Now the sticker was only temporary, so later packaging has it listed here on the back of the package. So make sure that your Baldwin and others does have the V1.2 identification to make sure that you've got the turbine sounds. Now when we were working to design the turbine and how the decoder operated, we had actually gathered a lot of reference materials including an operations manual so that we could actually see how the engineers were told to run the locomotive. We had also referenced published documentation such as the book Turbines Westward so that we could see what had been published previously and what the understanding was about how these locomotives worked. The last reference we had was actually a couple of guys in Utah who had either run the locomotives or had worked on them. And we used them as a guide to help us with the operation, how to build the decoder software to make sure that it was able to reproduce the operation of the turbine reliably. And we also used them to bounce off the sound recordings because anybody can go out and record a jet engine and say it's a turbine. But we wanted to make sure that we gave you authenticity. So we went out and talked to these guys and we gave them the sound samples before we put it into the decoder. Now one of, the, one of the comments we had gotten from one of these guys was less whine, more thunder. So when you hear a typical jet engine today, you hear that really high pitched whining sound. So our sound engineers had gone back and kind of played with and manipulated the sound because there are no turbines to record. And so this way we could get you the true authentic sound. And when we gave it back to them with the second shot, they gave us the thumbs up and said, you guys nailed it. So let's get into the operation and see how these things work. Now first we're going to start with this Athern slab side turbine. Now on the slab sides, these were the very first turbines that were released. Now what they were equipped with was a 700 horsepower Cummins motor. And this was the pup motor that actually powered up the things such as the uh, air compressors and the electrical energy for powering up the lights and so forth. Now when you hit F16, you can trigger the turbine to turn on or you can do it automatically based on speed. In this particular version of the of the turbine though, when you turn on the turbine, that pup motor would then go to sleep and turn off. The reason for that was that they figured the turbine was creating enough electrical energy to keep the other appliances running such as the air compressor and the lights. So let's take a listen and see how this runs. So first we're going to turn on our prime mover. So now you're going to hear that Cummins. Now when I start to move the locomotive, you're going to hear it notch up once. And then when we stop the locomotive, you'll hear it notch back down. Now pressing the F16 is going to turn on the turbine. Now that was you're hearing the backfire of the old residual oil as it sits in there. Imagine the big black fireball coming out. Now we're hearing the turbine fire up. And there's your thunder with less wine. So now we can move our locomotive. Now the original turbine actually had 16 notches for the diesel or for the turbine engine. Now because they were very minute in RPM, you're not going to hear much of a difference, but the DDE processor does still work. So we're going to put some resistance on the motor and you're going to hear that intensity gain and you're going to hear it slightly notch up as it's working against my hand. And then we release and you'll hear the intensity back down. Then we can bring it to a stop. Now after it's been sitting a while, we can actually turn off the turbine, turn off function 16, you'll hear the pup motor kick on, and then you'll hear the turbine drop down. 
Now in the real world, this process would take about 10 to 15 minutes because that turbine spindle would get hot and it needed to run to cool it off so that it didn't sag in the middle. But in model railroading terms, it runs fairly quickly. Now the second type of turbine, unfortunately I couldn't find it for this video, but it's the veranda type. And the veranda is known as the one with the walkways along the side. And so when the engineers were designing the turbine, they decided they could have the walkways on the outside. So it's a visual difference. This is why this one's called the slab side and the other one's called a veranda to, remember, to remind you of a veranda porch. Now the way the veranda works is very similar to the way the slab side works, except there is a setting in there and this one, the 1000 horsepower pup motor, would continue to run while the turbine was operating. And at that point, the reason was so that way they weren't using the electrical energy generated by the turbine to run things like the compressor and so forth. So the compressor was being run off that pup motor and the turbine itself was then running the traction motors and being able to pull the entire train. Now again, this is simply a CV setting in CV123 to select the turbine, but with the veranda, and it will automatically trigger that compressor properly to match the prototype. Now the third type of turbine that we have is what's known, nicknamed as the Big Blow. Now this is a three unit turbine where the A unit has a small Cooper Bessemer prime mover diesel engine on board. The second unit houses the turbine, and the third unit carries around extra fuel. Now the way this works is the lead unit will start up the prime mover when you press the F5 key or track power is applied. This will start up. Now the Cooper Bessemer power is not very strong, so it has enough, prime, enough horsepower to pull the locomotive around the yard itself and maintain power for the other appliances such as the air compressor and electrical generator for things like the gauges and lights and so forth. Now when the locomotive ties onto the train and it's ready to go, that's when they start up the turbine. And that's housed in the second unit. Now the second unit, the turbine will turn on, then of course all horsepower is applied and that tractive effort is then applied to each of the locomotive trucks so that that way it will be able to pull the heavy train. So in the Tsunami 2, you can select CV123 to tell the decoder that it's part of the Big Blow turbine, but that it's the A unit. And when you select the A unit, you'll hear that Cooper Bessemer engine kick on and run the prime mover and notch up and down around the yard. You can also select CV123 to tell the unit that it's the B unit, which will then mute the horn and bell intelligently, but it will also turn on the turbine sounds when you push F16, so that that way you get a true to life reproduction of how the real turbine worked. Let's take a look. Now that you see how the Tsunami 2 turbine operation replication is done, you can go through and set your turbine to match the models that you've chosen. Now for more information and detail on how to set these CVs, please go to the website at Soundtracks.com under the Manuals tab and download the Diesel Tsunami 2 User's Guide and in there will be a section on the turbines and the turbine operation so that you can follow along and set your decoder to match your model.